The agricultural sector gives a lot of opportunities for those that are keen to look at them. This entrepreneur chose the rabbit farming line of business. Here is his story. Agribusiness being the mainstay of Uganda's economy and providing for well over 60% of GDP also backed commercial rabbit farming, a rarely new farming enterprise in Uganda, and is being embraced by most farmers due to its relatively low cost of production and high returns. Thomas Semakula, a veterinary doctor and a farm consultant, is one of those farmers reaping dividends from rearing rabbits commercially. Dimo Sao Wabisolo. The zeal of empowering Ugandans to achieve financial independence through training is the inspiration behind the commencement of this project. Breeding Center, ya microfinance support center. There are several varieties of rabbits reared on this farm. Okay. active. Rabbits offer a number of health attributes to the human body, Thomas explains. Obumyo, boine migaso minji. Nyama yobumyo era, science akakasa, teri mwechi risa cha amanyi kwa kusinge vikavye nyama evidala. Era na avasawo, baji, batu gamba, nti nunji nyo eri okulivwa, eri avavana, avato, avamama, avayonsa, avamama, avali embuto. And in business, this is why commercial rabbit rearing is ideal. Echidalatebueta Semakula offers help and counsel on how to wither the storm to financial freedom post COVID 19, since most people's businesses are being affected by the lockdown. Mukasera Nakano, a car lockdown, Yetuaka Maramo in Mesi Kumpe Vidi, Avatava Singang, Avakayana, Banyurua, or Loku Firwa business, Zagalao, Atetivaka Kasanto, Vana Jao lockdown, Bana Babasogo, Kudam, business sales in Zimida. 
tuvuddeyo okubaya ambo kufuna capital ngabaye tamukulunda obumyo kibasoboze se okuba ko nentandi kwa etali ya bay kufuna tujja kubale etanga wano mu group seat basomese bwenga nomalo somese wa baddeyo bazimbe ebiyumba then tubawe loan yeyo bumyu so say ya sente enkalu the loan arrangement is through stock instead of monetary value he explains why sente yangu oke mu muntu najja na alimero koze sa omulamwa obensonga ezimweredwa sente ezo na ati wabane stock ye eyo bumyu asobolo bwero ndira we buzala natunda ko bumu nakola sente wabasa zewo kulia ko bumu okusobolo funa enyama ya waka nicho nachikola atobulala na butereka okugazi ya stock ja asobolo koze sa okumuza era farm ye egaziwe market for rabbit meat is readily available and guaranteed akatale kano kafunika kubanga twina partnership uh, ne company nga yo ya specializing mu kukola nyama ya abomyo commercial rabbit farming can be among the potential enterprises fit for smallholder farmers both in rural and urban areas to achieve financial freedom On this show, we are committed to sharing with you tips on how to make money, grow it, and then keep that money with you. Today, we are again sharing with you tips on how you can make it in the business world. The bigger question to always understand when you're bringing up a business opportunity and you're in a small to medium-sized enterprise, it's not about the capital. Neither is it about, you know, sometimes like say, you know, I don't have enough capital, uh, I'm not getting enough raw materials, you know, the, the, the four levels of inputs of capital, yeah? And for me, and I think where other enterprises succeed, is if you spend your time as an SME answering, so I'm going to be the next supplier of mangoes to this market. How are mangoes supplied? What is the differentiator in terms of the, how the mangoes are supplied? Is that this market, Mangoes are supplied when they are very dirty or poorly packaged? Is it that this market, mangoes are supplied very expensively? Is it that this market has very poor handling regimes of our mangoes? Because if you start your business idea by what problem you're solving, and you stay true to solving that problem compared to anyone else, then you'll actually have built a competitive niche. So what is your competitive niche? Are you just another mango supplier or another you know, a toothpaste supplier? What are you trying to fix? Because if you just join the wagon like everyone else and go to the marketplace and present your mangoes, yeah, and you're not really answering a problem, then you have the issues of sustainability. Then you have the issues of what, I'm, what new news am I bringing to this business model? But then again, when you pick your niche, stick to it. There might be tough seasons, but stick to your niche. Because if you're the only one playing that niche, over time, you'll build a brand. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen many people embrace digital technology or cyberspace as a way of communicating to each other. Now, with this are uh, risks associated. Today, we try to explore some of these risks and how we can avoid them. The biggest challenge of spearfishing, which uh, coronavirus has brought, many people are sending you a link telling you for see the top six uh, um, symptoms of COVID. So anybody is going to want to download. So you can receive that via email, via a uh, social network like WhatsApp, or via uh, a social sharing site like Facebook or Twitter. You click on it, maybe it installs an application in your phone, which you may not know, and that becomes uh, something which is... Uh, to, to, to compromise your security. So the best way to manage problems is like uh, phishing or spear phishing, the best way is called uh, training, awareness. You have to get people understand that if any email or message comes from a user you don't know, you don't expect, do not click on that kind of things. And I can say there is a high level of maturity from a corporate point of view. If you go to many financial institutions or other organizations, some of them will, um, will uh, for example, if an email comes from outside the internal network, 
they will flag that email and indicate that it is not from internally, so you have to be careful with clicking links. Some of the current systems already automatically disable links. So there we see increasing use of uh, what we call machine learning and artificial intelligence in money set up within the uh, threat intelligence systems and threat cyber security systems within financial institutions to manage the threats themselves. So in addition to those systems, you need also to have a user awareness so that they know that um, you don't just click on anything. Well, we've come to the end of this week's edition of Banana Markets and coming to you all the way from one of the banana plantations somewhere in this country. And we'll be discussing some of the issues we've touched this week in our subsequent shows, especially the agricultural subsector. Because as we've already heard, it's a silver bullet that can, you know, help turn around Uganda's fortunes in these hard times. But we'll be discussing that, like I said, in our subsequent shows. I've been your host, Charles Boji. We're happy that you watched and we want to keep the engagement online. Please drop us a line on the rest on your screen. Now, for me and Tim, I'd like to wish you a very good evening and to say bye-bye and God bless you. <laughs>